Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to pick up on the uh, Nigel Farage bank account rant again and discuss the latest because there's been a couple of interesting developments. Not the least of which is a BBC editor's explanation which is way more mundane than we've been imagining but also much funnier. But first if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics please subscribe to the channel. So Nigel Farage has claimed that Coots told him, that's his bank, told him they were closing his account with them without giving a reason and that many other banks had denied him an account. Now, there is only one possible reason in law for this and that is that the banks do not trust his financial affairs. That is, as I said in the previous video, assuming Farage was telling the truth. Banks have a duty to make sure that they're not involved in such activities as money laundering, for example. So when Farage said his account was being closed without reason and that no other bank would touch him, he was giving people the very strong impression that his financial affairs were, at the very least, too opaque to pass the due diligence checks on him. And a very helpful follower on Twitter pointed me to uh, the latest Treasury advice, advisory notice, which unsurprisingly I had not seen. It seems that just a couple of days before Nigel Farage had his little Twitter rant, the government were requiring banks to carry out enhanced checks on people with financial transactions running through, you know, some extra little countries and territories. So if any individuals have any transactions where either end of it is in these so-called high risk countries and some extra ones were being added to the list, then the bank has to carry out extra checks, raising the possibility that some people might fall foul of those due diligence checks and of course have action taken against their accounts. So is this what happened to Nigel Farage? Well, I mean, the date's suspicious, certainly. The Treasury implemented these new requirements for banks and two days later, he's moaning on Twitter that his account is being closed without reason. However, it seems there's actually a much more mundane explanation and a way funnier one. So the BBC is reporting a version of likely events which would suggest that Nigel Farage has been telling a few fibs. Remarkable, I know, remarkable. According to the BBC's business editor, Simon Jack, not only did the bank coots tell Farage what the problem was, but they also offered him an alternative bank account. Now, Nigel Farage apparently said, when this was brought up to with him, that the alternative account was offered later on, rather than on the same time. Now, it doesn't really matter when it was offered. The fact of the matter is, he is now admitting that he has been offered a bank account. So he's lying about being turned down by all these other banks, isn't he? Farage has basically been creating this narrative of being denied a bank account in the UK, thus potentially driving him out of the country. This does not appear to be the case after all. So what's the reason behind his Coots account being closed? Really very simple. This is the bank for the very wealthy. As I said in my last video on the subject, you have to have a million pounds just to open an account. Their rules are that you must borrow or invest at least a million pounds with the bank or have three million in savings. And it is being reported that Farage seems to have dropped below this level. In other words, not enough money in his account. So he wasn't being denied banking services. He wasn't even being denied by any particular banking group because NatWest owns Coots and so Farage, when told that his account would have to be closed due to this lack of investment, was offered a normal bank account at Westminster, same, same banking group. So according to the BBC, what seems to have happened here is that Farage has not been denied banking at all and he's not been forced out of the country, he has been told that his millionaire's premium account must close due to the insufficient funds, basically, and that he can transfer it to a normal account of the sort you or I manage perfectly well with. So essentially the story here is that Nigel Farage seems to be a raging, lying snowflake who is whining because he's not allowed in his millionaire's club anymore. But obviously he couldn't say that because it would sound a bit, you know, conceited. So he created a media storm, which has even suckered the Tory government into it all. See, they should know better. I mean, or how many times have they sort of gone along with Boris Johnson only to look like prized turkeys at the end of it? Did they not learn lessons? Because consider, even members of the government have been jumping on the bandwagon here, saying, oh, how awful it is that a bank would close your account because of your political beliefs, even though 
Not only did Farage offer up not a shred of evidence to back this claim up, everyone knew what the likely reason was. If you are not told the real reason, we know what the reason is. But he was told the real reason. You know, but we took him at his word, of course, that Coots had not given a reason. We thought, well, you know, it is possible. We, we, we jumped to a much more exciting conclusion about what really happened. Farage has simply not maintained his personal bank account. I doubt it means he's broke. I don't think it means he's broke. I think probably what's happened is he's just moving everything through business accounts in order to dodge taxes. But as the BBC editor also noted, Coots won't run business accounts for people without a personal account. So if his personal account isn't keeping the funds up, then they also close his business accounts. Really that simple. This actually may be as simple as the supposedly patriotic Nigel Farage trying to avoid paying taxes which can be used to fund the NHS. So he's fallen foul of his millionaire's club rules and he's been made to get a bank account for the masses. A people's bank account. Oh, no, we can't have that. I don't want a people's bank account. Oh, it's filthy. But whatever the reason, according to the BBC, it's basically a lack of investment in his personal account. Simple as that. And, and so many people rushed to defend Farage over this and attack the outrageous state of affairs suggested in his narrative. They are all about to look very silly indeed. In fact, I've seen one or two already try and go, oh, no, I, this, this version of events doesn't sit right. I don't think this is right. Do Coots really expect people to have a million pounds in their account? Yes, yes, they do. It is a bank, as I say, for the very wealthy. So, yeah, these people are all about to look very silly indeed. In fact, like right tits, quite frankly. Mind you, it's not all good news. I suppose it does mean that Farage won't be leaving the country after all. This is the second time he's led us down the garden path, isn't it? Second time he's told us he'll be leaving the country. No, we're still stuck with him. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.